Today we start our series which looks at digital and cyber currencies. Hello again, I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. One of the most common requests I've received on the DFA channel is for us to look at cyber currencies. Often the questions then move on to ask about the specific risks surrounding Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency of course introduced in 2008. This is a good question, especially in the light of recent volatility of these instruments. Here's the recent price chart. Not pretty. But before we can get into the specifics of Bitcoin, I think there are a broader set of issues to consider, such as what is money anyway? We certainly know that there's been a rapid proliferation of various financial technologies as consumers shift towards online and mobile financial services. And money has been available electronically via the banking system for several decades, so digital currencies themselves are not new. What is new is the use of distributed ledger technologies, DLT, in conjunction with cryptography for currencies and payments. And we're going to come back to this in more detail in a later post, but briefly, this technology, combined with the proliferation of smartphones and internet access and changing consumer expectations, has reinvigorated discussions on electronic forms of currencies. Indeed, even central banks are considering their role of providing cash and in financial technology innovations. Should they issue a digital currency to the public and what would such a currency look like? I think we need a basic framework to help us to think about the relationship between money and these new cyber currencies. And we need to be clear about what money is. The classic definition of money is built on three elements. First, it's a unit of account. For example, we price things in dollars. Next, it's a medium of exchange, so we can buy and sell goods or services. And third, it can be a store of value, as for example, we build up savings. And in the past, money has existed in various forms, allowing it to be used as a unit of account, a medium of exchange, and a store of value. It is linked either the value of an asset underlying the money, like spices, salt, or gold, or trust in the money issuer, for example, a bank, or both. Today, generally, central banks issue what's called fiat currencies, cash, on behalf of governments. And fiat currency is legal tender whose value is backed by the government that issued it. The US dollar is fiat money, as are the euro and many other major world currencies. This approach differs from money whose value is underpinned by some physical good, such as gold or silver, and that's called commodity money. Fiat currency is physical currency, notes and coins, and legal tender. And people trust fiat currency to the extent that they trust the government will not go bankrupt and that the national economy will not collapse. People use fiat currency because it is a good unit of account, a medium of exchange, and a store of value. And of course, it can be used to pay taxes, but it is all based around confidence. In addition, people use fiat currency instead of notes issued by private institutions because most countries do not allow any other institutions to issue notes and coins, unless you're in Scotland, for example. But now, of course, money can also be issued in a digital form, and there is no restriction on who can issue digital currency. Similar to fiat currency, digital currency is a useful form of currency if it can be used as a unit of account, a medium of exchange, and a store of value. In addition, digital currency is trusted to the extent that users trust the person or institution that issued it and the economy that underpins it. However, there are two additional sources of trust in digital money that does not exist in fiat currency. The first is trust in the technology that underpins a digital currency, which ensures that money, for example, cannot be spent more than once. And the second is whether it can be easily exchanged for fiat currency. Now, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand recently published a neat diagram to show the various forms of money. They called it a money tree, and it helps to organise digital currencies into categories. It's one of the best I've seen, and I'm going to use it for the next part of this piece. The first category in the money tree distinguishes between physical money and intangible forms of money. 
The second category in the money tree differentiates between the technologies that digital currencies use to transact. And there are two forms of technology currently in use, conventional ledger technology and DLT with cryptography. Conventional ledger technology is a term describing the financial market infrastructure that we currently use to securely transact payments. This infrastructure is centralized and hierarchical, which means that only trusted parties can initiate and settle payments to ensure that it is not spent more than once and account balances are accurate. Distributed ledger technologies, a ledger that records transactions and account balances that is shared over a network of computers and uses cryptography, ensures that cryptocurrencies cannot be spent more than once and that account balances are accurate. Cryptography is a technique used to hide information that is transmitted over a public network. The third category in the money tree differentiates between digital currencies that are exchanged for cash at a fixed rate, for example, one for one, and those that are exchanged at a variable rate. A digital currency with a fixed exchange rate to cash represents a promise for that currency to be redeemed for banknotes and coins at par value at any time. This par value promise then creates an additional source of trust in this form of digital currency. A digital currency with a variable exchange rate to cash is trusted to the extent that the people trust the institution that issued it and the technology that it relies on. This form of currency is more independent from cash. So now let's look in more detail at the digital side of the house. We start with digital currencies that rely on conventional infrastructure. Within these currencies, they may have a fixed exchange rate to cash or a variable exchange rate to cash. These forms of digital currencies could be issued by the private sector or by central banks. And digital currencies with a fixed exchange rate to cash are the most common form of digital money. They include digital currency issued by commercial banks, such as the electronic currency held in a transactional bank account. Because this currency can be very easily converted to cash at par value, one for one, most people would not even consider it to be a separate form of currency. Trust in digital currency issued by commercial banks is based on its par value exchange rate to cash, as well as trust in the commercial bank that issues it. Other examples of conventional digital currencies with par value exchange rates to cash are those issued by mobile wallets. And mobile wallets are accounts either online, on a mobile phone application, or attached to a credit card, where issuers can store their credit or debit card details or maintain a prepaid account. When a user uploads money into the wallet, the wallet then issues digital currency to their account. The user can make payments using the money stored in their account or with the cards that are linked to the account. And examples of these wallets are PayPal, Western Union, Google Wallet, and Visa Money Transfer. Conventional digital currencies with variable exchange rates to cash are less common, but do exist. Trust in these forms of money are based on trust that the issuer of the currency will allow it to be exchanged for goods or services at a reasonable exchange rate. One example of this digital currency would be rewards points earned via loyalty schemes such as air miles, points earned through flight loyalty schemes. Those like air points in New Zealand can be redeemed for goods or services through the air point store or by using them to purchase air New Zealand flights. The exchange rate for air points to fiat currency depends on how the issuer prices the goods and services that can be purchased with air points. Another example is in game currencies, such as the currency in World of Warcraft. The owners of World of Warcraft did not allow the in-game currency to be purchased with fiat or any other currency, but a market still exists. The exchange rate on this underground market is determined by supply and demand dynamics and is extremely volatile. There are many examples of central banks issuing conventional digital money that can be exchanged with cash at par value. Central banks currently issue digital currency to, for example, commercial banks. So the Reserve Bank issues digital currency to commercial banks through the provision of money into each bank accounts within the exchange settlement system. This digital currency represents 
the commercial bank's holdings of cash, as well as each bank's holdings of money generated through its lending operations. Trust in digital currency issued by a central bank is based on the same fundamentals as trust in fiat currency because of the promise of par value convertibility to cash and the fact that the central bank issued it. And in the past, central banks have issued conventional digital currency to the public through government-owned postal banks. More recently, some South American and African central banks have issued digital currencies to the public using mobile wallets. In 2015, for example, Ecuador issued a mobile currency called Dinaro Electronico, which is denominated in US dollars. The initiative was motivated by the government's desire to provide low-cost mobile payment services to its people who do not have bank accounts. Consumers can open a Dinaro Electronico account using their national identification number and a mobile phone that has been activated by an authorised operator. Electronic payments can then be made without the internet or a bank account. Money is uploaded to the mobile wallet through electronic transfers or by depositing and uploading tangible currency at transaction centres. The Dinaro Electronico can be converted to fiat currency, US dollars at par value. However, take-up rates of this particular mechanism has been low as Ecuadorians still prefer US dollars for everyday transactions. Another example of a conventional digital currency issued by a central bank is the proposal by Riksbank to issue an e-krona in Sweden. The Riksbank is facing a situation of decreased availability of cash in bank branches and increased take-up of mobile payment technologies. Because of this, the Riksbank is concerned about its ability to promote a safe and efficient payment system and to provide Sweden with fiat currency. Therefore, it is proposing issuing a digital currency called the e-krona to reduce concentration in the commercial banking system and to counter problems that could arise from reduced public access to its fiat currency. The RIS Bank proposed two forms of e-krona. The first option is a register-based e-krona, where the RIS Bank will hold deposit accounts of e-krona and users will access their e-krona holdings using cards, online applications or other payment service providers. The register-based e-krona is very similar similar to current commercial bank electronic money, but balances will be held by the RIS Bank, not by commercial banks. The second option is a value-based e-krona, which would be much like a preloaded gift card. The e-krona would be stored on a card or application and would be lost if the card was lost, as there would be no centralization of deposits. A central bank could issue a conventional digital currency with a variable exchange rate to cash, but this is a more abstract idea. Currently, there are no real-world examples of a central bank issuing a currency that would have a variable exchange rate with cash. But in principle, it could be issued. The premise for such a currency is a situation where users believe that there is an imperfect substitute for cash, so are willing to pay more or less to hold it compared to cash. It would also require a central bank to not accept the digital currency at par value, from cash. This form of digital currency could be used as an additional monetary policy tool by a central bank. And in this case, a central bank could vary the supply of the digital currency relative to cash, depending on whether it wanted to, for example, encourage spending or saving. So now let's look at cryptocurrencies, which can either have a fixed exchange rate to cash or a variable exchange rate to cash. These forms of digital currencies are relatively new and probably less well understood. These are titled fixed cryptocurrency and variable cryptocurrency in the money tree. Cryptocurrencies have been issued by private institutions. Bitcoin is the most well-known example of cryptocurrency, but there are many other cryptocurrencies in circulation which transact over forms of distributed ledgers. These cryptocurrencies are collectively referred to as altcoins. These currencies can have either a fixed exchange rate with cash or a variable exchange rate with cash. Cryptocurrencies with fixed exchange rates are typically backed by a pool of assets, for example, such as national currency, which makes them more stable as a medium of exchange and a store of value. 
than cryptocurrencies with a variable exchange rate to cash. For example, the Tether platform issues three currencies and claims each is fully backed by national currencies. These are USDT, backed by the US dollar, EURT, backed by euros, and JPYT, backed by the yen. And in New Zealand, Cryptopia issues a cryptocurrency called, called NZ, which is backed by New Zealand dollars. These currencies are trusted because of the technology they're based on and the fact that they can be easily exchanged for cash. As mentioned, cryptocurrencies can also have variable exchange rates to cash. The best example of this digital currency is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's exchange rate to fiat currencies is influenced by changes in demand for Bitcoins and a fixed supply of the Bitcoins. Bitcoin's exchange rate has fluctuated dramatically since its implementation. Thus, Bitcoin has been behaving more like a speculative asset than a form of money. And users of Bitcoin trust it due to the particular form of DLT that it's based on called blockchain. This technology relies on a distributed ledger and network of agents to validate transactions using a proof of work protocol that makes it very difficult to spend Bitcoins more than once. Bitcoin appears to be driven by a belief that others will be prepared to buy Bitcoins at higher and higher prices. And Bitcoin's exchange rate fluctuations reduces its usefulness as a medium of exchange for real world goods and services and as a unit of account. If Bitcoin cannot be used as a stable medium of exchange, then it would not be a reliable form of money. Central banks could also issue a cryptocurrency, but at the moment there are no examples of a currency such as this being issued to the public. A cryptocurrency issued by a central bank would likely have a fixed exchange rate with cash, but could also have a variable exchange rate with cash. A central bank could issue a cryptocurrency that is traded at par value with fiat currency by ensuring that for each unit of cryptocurrency issued into the circulation, an equivalent unit of fiat currency is removed from circulation. This would control the supply of both forms of fiat currency to ensure a par exchange rate. Alternatively, the central bank could promise to always exchange one unit of cryptocurrency for one unit of fiat currency. Now, no central bank has issued a cryptocurrency. However, the Bank of Canada and Monetary Authority of Singapore have separately experimented with using a cryptocurrency for interbank settlement in a test environment. The cryptocurrencies in these test environments were backed by a pool of national currency to ensure a par value with cash. Others have proposed a hypothetical cryptocurrency that could be issued by a central bank to the public called Fedcoin. This cryptocurrency would run on the blockchain and have a flexible supply. So each unit of national currency swapped for Fedcoin would be removed from the monetary base. And each unit of Fedcoin swapped for the national currency would be removed from circulation. The authors say this would ensure a stable exchange rate between Fedcoin and cash. Alternatively, a central bank could decide to issue a cryptocurrency with a variable exchange rate to cash in the same way that it could issue a conventional digital currency with a variable exchange rate to cash. It may be more believable that users view a cryptocurrency as an imperfect substitute for cash and even digital currency issued by commercial banks because of the DLT and cryptography on which it transacts. So in summary, we've laid the ground rules to describe the elements which makes money, money. We also looked at the range of options for digital and cryptocurrencies, which are many and varied. In the next edition of this occasional series, we're going to look in more detail at cryptos and if you liked what you saw here today, please do like the post and leave a comment. And if you've already subscribed, thanks. I really appreciate your support. If you have not yet done so, please do subscribe to get alerts to new posts. I'm Martin North, the Principal of Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for taking the time to watch and I'll see you next time.